Hello everyone, my name is Nick and today I'm going to take you guys on a Hoya houseplant tour. So similar to my last houseplant tour where I shared with you guys my entire Peperomia collection, today I'm going to share with you guys my entire Hoya collection. So my Hoya collection is roughly half the size of my Peperomia collection. I believe I have 24 or 25 different varieties of Hoya at the moment, so still plenty to share with you but a little bit more manageable. So we're going to start with the Hoyas that I have right behind the camera here today. Where in this area I have this Hoya pubicalix, which I'm not too sure on the varieties on many of my Hoya pubicalix. If I'm not mistaken, there is no true species of Hoya pubicalix, so they're all variants or cultivars, but I am not too sure on many of mine. So this one I just kind of fell in love with the green color of the leaves, as well as the slight splashiness that some of the leaves have. Some of these leaves are like crazy splashy, some of them are only like a little bit splashy, but this one leaf here is like half splashy, half green, which I just love. Um, and then behind it, I have this Hoya Carnosa Crimson Queen, which is probably one of the most standard varieties of Hoya that you would run into in your garden center. And that's with, with good reason, because Hoya Carnosa is so easy to grow. So that's why it's so readily available. Um, some might consider it a little bit boring as far as Hoyas go, but I still think it's a very fun plant as it's beautiful and it grows very, very well for me. So if I pull you guys in a little bit closer over here, you'll see I have this Hoya Curtisii, which is a very tiny leafed Hoya. It has a very nice splash to the leaves. It's a little bit more difficult in terms of it needs a little bit more moisture, I've found, compared to some of my other Hoyas. Hoyas are very drought tolerant. I don't find that I'm watering many of my Hoyas more than once a week for sure. Uh, but I do find that this Hoya Curtisii does appreciate a little bit more water than some of the other ones. And then down here, I'll pull it up, is this Hoya Wayetii, or sometimes they call it Hoya Kentiana. I know there's a difference between those two species, but they're usually kind of interchangeable in on the houseplant market, although they are different plants. So I believe this one is Hoya Wayetii. This one is certainly a more common Hoya, um, but I do find that the Hoya Wayetii I does appreciate a little bit more light, which is why I do have it closer to the south-facing window. I do have a little bit of new growth coming in here, which is nice because I haven't really been paying as much attention to this plant, so I didn't even know that was coming in, so that is something that is very exciting. I will say with Hoyas, really the only pest that I notice is mealybug. So I did have a few mealybug on this Hoya a few weeks ago, but I did a pretty good job cleaning it up because I don't see any mealybug at the moment. So that is usually the only pest struggle that I have with my Hoyas, at least the ones that I have in my home. So I believe that is all the Hoyas that I have in this window, but I do have a Deschidia up here. So this is a Deschidia russifolia. So Deschidias are in the same family as Hoyas, but they are not the same genus. So they're very closely related. They have very similar behavior. I do find my Deschidias, or at least this Deschidia russifolia, appreciates a little bit more sunlight than my Hoyas. So that's why it's hanging up here in the south facing window and it does require a little bit more moisture. So I am watering it probably every five to seven days but that's probably only because it's in the south facing window. So a really easy plant. Um, I haven't had it flower for me yet. It's known, this specific Deschidia is known for its flowers. I think it's called like the million hearts flower plant or something along those lines. Correct me if I'm wrong, don't roast me, but it's something along those lines and I'm very much looking forward to this thing flowering and it could even be flowering and I miss it because it's hanging up there in the window. But yeah, a really, really fun and easy plant to grow. So we're gonna move over to the bar cart or the plant cart, whatever you wanna call it, which I have a few Hoya over there. Actually, before we go over to the bar cart, I just gotta show you guys up here on my shelf, I have this other Hoya pubicalix that is quite nice and large, a little bit more deeper green foliage, less splashing to the leaves, but there's still a good amount of splash just compared to the other one that I had at first. Um, but yeah, this one, no idea what the variety is on it, but I've just been really enjoying watching it live it hasn't really grown for me but usually when i purchase hoyas i usually don't get a lot of new growth on them right away i usually have to wait a little bit of time before i do see some new growth so actually moving over to the bar cart there is this hoya abavada which is definitely one of my favorite species of hoyas at the moment fortunately it's a pretty easy one to get your hands on and pretty inexpensive but I just love the large round leaves. It's just so amazing. And it's a really easy grower too. It's put off quite a lot of new growth since I've gotten my hands on it. So I've been really enjoying watching this one grow. I have it kind of temporarily hanging here underneath this grow light because I didn't really have a spot for it before, but it's been doing really, really well here. So I'm kind of like not 
ready to move it, but I would really like to get it out of the way because I think it's blocking a little bit of the light that my Modern Sprout Grow Bar is giving off to these plants down here. And then underneath that I have this Hoya Pubic Calyx that I recently shared with you guys in my last houseplant haul. Uh, this is a very, very splashy form of Hoya Pubic Calyx. Once again, I don't know the variety on it, but I just really fell in love with the way it looked as I do with every Hoya Pubic Calyx that I have in my home. And then another one I have back here kind of hidden is this Hoya Retusa. So this is a very fine and grassy Hoya. It almost doesn't even look like a Hoya. It's kind of very interesting. But this is a Hoya that I find definitely needs more moisture along with that Hoya Curtisii that I shared with you guys earlier. So this one definitely needs to be watered a little bit more often than my other Hoyas, specifically because this one has finer leaves. I'm sure that's why. Um, I haven't noticed it need any extra humidity, which it seems like it might because it's super grassy, but I have had some pretty good luck growing this plant as long as I remember to water it. So I think that's all of the Hoyas that I have in this area just getting over, but I think I have some more Hoyas over in my plant corner, so we're gonna head over there now. Over here in my plant corner, I have this Hoya Ban Nagong Nagoy. I am so sorry, I know I am mispronouncing that, and I've seen your guys' comments saying that the NG at the beginning of the word sounds like when you say song, like the end of the word, but that just like makes, I just like still don't know how to sum that out. So we're going to talk a lot less about this Hoya going forward, but it's still relevant enough for this video. Um, so this has been a very easy Hoya for me. I got it in my recent Logies unboxing video and it's given off quite a bit of new growth as far as this tendril goes. And I do have this new leaf starting to grow in here and I see new leaf buds on all of these. So definitely a seriously easy Hoya, at least for this first month because Sometimes I get Hoyas and they like lose their growth like crazy and they yellow and it just falls off. And that's not that fun. So this Hoya Ban Nagong, I'm sorry for saying it again, um, has been a really easy growing Hoya thus far. And another one I got from the Logies unboxing is this Hoya Iris Marie that's down here. This is definitely a more like upright Hoya. I really appreciate its growth. It's a lot different. It might be one of the more like shrub-like Hoyas if I'm not mistaken. But uh, yeah, really enjoy this one. And especially because the new growth comes in this gorgeous maroon kind of uh, like rusty green color. It's really gorgeous. And this one is another one that has been very easy going for me thus far uh, with a lot of new growth coming in. These new leaves are already growing in quite vigorously as well as the tendril is shooting up quite nicely. So I'm very excited that this one's growing very well too. So I believe that's it for this corner and I don't even think I have any Hoyas over there, but I have some Hoyas in this other window. So we're gonna head over to this window across the room. So in this window, which is a west facing window, I do have a few Hoyas and Hoya relatives. So we'll start off with this Hoya relative that I have right here. This rather long guy is the Seropegia woodyi or string of hearts. So Seropegias are also in the same family as Hoyas and Deschidias. So they have very similar care. I find Seropegia to be an insanely fast and easy grower. Very, very drought tolerant. I'm not watering this plant very often at all because this one is still in its plastic nursery pot. I'm probably watering it like every four to six weeks, believe it or not. But if it was in terracotta, I would probably be watering it more like every week or two. Uh, so definitely depends on what kind of planter it's planted in, but definitely a really easy grow that I highly recommend trying out. And then down here, all the way in the corner, I have a Hoya Carnosa, just the standard Hoya Carnosa. So the plain green leaved one, um, rather small plant, haven't had it for a very long time, but I've still enjoyed its presence. And then I also have a Hoya Shepardii, which looks a little bit similar to that Hoya uh, Wyetii that I shared with you guys near the beginning of this video. But this one has a little bit more longer leaves, so this is a really interesting plant. I think they call this one the String Bean Hoya. And I do have one more Hoya over here. This is a Hoya Macrophylla. I think it's Albo Marginata is the correct uh, cultivar. Uh, with the the white edges and this would get to be a nice pink color in more light which is why it's right in the west facing window since i believe this one can take a little bit more light i actually do have another hoya macrophylla alba marginata behind the camera on this table right here this plant stand um, that I'm still trying to find a home for. I don't know exactly where I'm gonna put it in my home, so it's kind of just temporarily living over here. But permanently living is this Hoya Crinkles Tinkles, which I'll pull up for you guys. Um, and this one has a nice new tendril coming in. So I think this is a cultivar that is 
created with Hoya Crinkle 8. This is one of those Hoyas from the legendary Hoya lady who runs the Coco Ranch, so this is a rather interesting one that is definitely not one that you would walk into a plant shop and see. So that is all the Hoyas for this area. Oh, actually, I do have one more. So this is a Hoya Pubicalyx. This one I do have the cultivar on, so this one is a Hoya Pubicalyx Hawaiian Purple. Um, I probably should be giving this one a little bit more light. I have it living in my bookcase here on top of my little uh, chair, my little tiny chair that it's just sitting on top of, but I love the way it looks there. So for now, it's living there and it's been doing okay, but I know if I wanna get some serious growth on this Hoya Pubicalyx, I should really consider giving it a little bit more light. So that is now it for all of the Hoyas in my living room. So I do have one or two Hoyas over in my kitchen, so we're gonna head over there. We're here in my kitchen where this is a south-facing window, so this is a very, very bright location. And I only have a few Hoyas, so this is a Hoya Australis. This one is definitely one that I kind of experienced some of that yellowing leaf loss when I first brought it home as it's acclimating. We do have a lot of new growth. The new growth is not very large. We are very close to a bright window, so I'm not really sure what's going on with this, but it's growing, it's not dying anymore. I'm just kind of keeping an eye out and probably going to assess the situation come the spring if the situation is the same as it is now. I also just have a few cuttings down here. So next to this Hoya Wayetii cutting is this Hoya Sigillatus, which is a rather interesting Hoya. It's got, it gets some really nice purple foliage when it gets a lot of light and it's got some really nice swash to the leaves. Um, very minute shape, so I really, really enjoy this one. It's just cuttings I've had for quite a while from my friend Kirsty, and they're just finally rooting, but I would like them to be rooted a little bit more before I do plant them up. And then in this window, I just have a Serapegia woodii variegata, or a variegated string of hearts, which is a rather beautiful plant. I love the pink color that the foliage gets. And this one is actually flowering for me at the moment, so it does have a few flowers at the base. Um, this one is very, very easy to propagate by cutting, so I know that they do cost a little bit of money when you do find them in stores or online, but if you do get your hands on one, you'll find that once it does start growing, there's no stopping it. And it's very easy to propagate and just continue making a larger plant, which is exactly what I did with this one because I purchased it as a very, very small plant and I've just been growing it out for over a year now, taking a few cuttings and really have filled up the plant and now it's a really nice hanging plant. So I've been really enjoying watching this one grow. I think that's all the Hoyas that I have in this area. Oh wait, there's actually one more Hoya that I have behind the camera in my hallway here, or the little connector area to my living room for my kitchen. So behind the camera up there, I have a Hoya Carnosa Crimson Princess, which is very similar to the Hoya Carnosa Crimson Queen that I shared with you guys earlier, in the exception that the white or the cream variegation is in the center of the leaf, whereas the Hoya Crimson Queen, it's on the outside of the leaf. I find that the Hoya Crimson Princess is like the easiest Hoya to grow in my experience. It can take like middle of the road light. It's definitely a few feet off from that south facing window and it's been doing really really well I only water it probably every two weeks in a terracotta pot because it is in a little bit of a lower light situation But it's been doing phenomenally well I've had this one for probably about two years now and I've been loving watching this one grow And I do have one Hoya in my bathroom, but there's just one in there and it's so small So I'm just gonna tell you guys about it. It's a Hoya Bella and I actually have had another Hoya Bella that you, if you've watched my videos for my, a while, you might be wondering where it is, but it actually had a really bad case of mealybug and I tried really hard. I tried to take some cuttings and it was just not working out. So that one did meet its end in my trash can, unfortunately. However, my coworker gave me a cutting of her Hoya Bella a little bit before that happened, which is kind of funny because you know, I just was like, oh cool, new Hoya Bella, rooted cutting, I'll take it. And so I put it in a little pot in my bathroom away from the one that has mealybug and it's been doing really, really well. Another Hoya that definitely appreciates much more moisture compared to these other Hoyas, so it's definitely one you really gotta keep up on. And if you don't water Hoya Bella enough, you'll definitely feel in the leaves the lack of succulents, so it'll definitely tell you very quickly. But Hoya Bella is a very easy bloomer, so I'm very excited to at least have another piece of this plant in my home. All right, we're gonna move over to my bedroom where I have quite a few more Hoya to share with you guys. We are back in my bedroom once again for the Hoya portion of our houseplant tour. So I have right here a Hoya elagiorum, which is another one of the Hoyas that I recently got from Logies. This one has once again been a very easy grow for me. It hasn't put up as much growth as the other ones, but there's been absolutely no dieback, so that is excellent. Then directly next to that I have this Hoya croniana eskimo, although the leaves do look a little bit more like 
Hoya croniana, the lady who gave me cuttings of this plant when she had purchased it. She did purchase it as a Hoya croniana eskimo, which I could see in the older foliage of the plant that she had given me cuttings of, but it looks like this has definitely reverted quite a bit. Um, this one I got as cuttings and it's definitely rooted quite well. I can feel in the leaves that this plant has taken very well. So I'm really excited to watch this one grow. And then behind it I have another Hoya curtisii, a more full pot than the one that I had earlier. Uh, this one is once again one I kind of struggled with at first, but with a little bit more extra moisture and a little bit more light, I find that this one has been easy enough, not like as hard as I thought it was, but it's still not the easiest Hoya. And then down here I have this Hoya Lacunosa. This is just one cutting that I gotten from the same lady who gave me the Hoya Croniana and haven't seen too much on this, but this was completely rooted when she gave it to me. And then down here I have a Hoya Dickasoniana, which or La Hoya Dickasoniana Ladybug, actually, which when I had talked about this, this is from the same lady who had given me those other two Hoyas, and when she had given it to me, she had it as its past name, Hoya Weebella, because if I'm not mistaken, they were thinking that this plant was a subspecies of Hoya Bella, so they were calling it Weebella, and then they kind of were bouncing back and forth between the name Weebella and Dickasoniana, but if I'm not mistaken, don't come for me if I misread the article, but I'm pretty sure that they're leaning more towards this not being a subspecies of Hoya Bella, so people more commonly refer to it as Hoya Dickasoniana instead of Hoya Weebella. So politely let me know if I am wrong in the comments, but that is what I gathered from the article that I read. And then over here I have another Hoya Wyetii, so this one has been very easy growing for me. Um, I've had it for a few years now and it's, you know, not grown tremendously, but it's still grown enough where I would consider it easy. And then I actually have two more Hoyas or Hoya relatives next to it. So this is a Deschidia. This one is Deschidia oeantha, um, another really easy growing plant. I give it a medium amount of light. I actually give this one a little bit more water than some of the other plants. So this is definitely one I find it needs a little bit more water. And then directly next to that is a David, a Hoya David Comingii, which I have not seen any new growth on, but I have not lost any growth on, which is good because I was doing a little bit of research after I got this one in, and apparently it's not the easiest Hoya to grow. So got to keep it very moist and humid. So not too moist, but we're going to figure this one out as we go. And if we lose it, we'll understand that it's in good faith. Um, we're going to move a little bit more over here. Or I have another Hoya Retusa. So I've had this one for a bit longer than the one that I just got recently, obviously, because I just got it. But this one has been a very easy grower for me. It has grown quite a bit since I got it. And I've just been really loving the look of it. It's, it's such a fun little plant. Um, this one is in a ceramic pot. You might notice that a lot of my Hoyas are planted in terracotta, which I know there's like this myth that like the whole like Hoya roots attached to the pot, but like I've never had that issue, so I don't know if it's true or not. This Hoya retusa is one that I would probably recommend growing in ceramic because it holds on to moisture more than terracotta would. And there is another Hoya hidden behind that is a Hoya fichii that hasn't really, once again, grown for me, but it hasn't died, so like I've mentioned at the beginning of this video, many of my Hoyas, when I bring them in, I don't get a lot of new growth in them right away, and I usually have to have them for maybe a full growing season or at least a few months before I get some new growth on at least some of them. Specifically, if they're grown from just like one cutting. Sometimes if you buy a more full pot, you'll get a little bit more growth because those cuttings are a little bit more mature. There's a Hoya Lacunosa up here. Um, this is a rather new one to me. I'm seeing a few leaves are falling off, so I should probably assess the situation but it also could be just acclimating to my home because I had literally just gotten it like two weeks ago. So leaves up here looking good, leaves down here aren't looking as great. So maybe we'll do a little trim trim and we'll be okay after that. Um, I have a Hoya Carnosa Crimson Queen once again, all the way on the bottom here. I've had this one for at least a year now and it's been doing pretty well. I have some nice new growth and this one leaf that's a very white, which is not usually a good thing, although it is beautiful. So it's something to appreciate while it's around before it crisps up and dies. And then I have one more Hoya. This is a Hoya Australis, once again. There are many different cultivars of Hoya Australis. Um, I'm not sure which this one is or the one that I had in the kitchen, but I, I'm not going to give up with the Hoya Australis. It wasn't a very easy one for me when I got this other one. This one has not given me as much grief, but it's not giving me as much growth as some of these other Hoyas, so can't speak on the care of that one either. 
I think I covered all of the Hoyas. No, it's not all of it because in the window here I have my Hoya Carrii or my Heartleaf Hoya, which is a Hoya that definitely appreciates a lot of light. It's not been the fastest grower for me. I've only gotten maybe two or three leaves since I've purchased it, and I find it's one that it puts off new growth and then the leaf falls off. So it's one that I am still acclimating to myself, but I haven't had it for longer than a year yet, so maybe we'll get some new growth come springtime, but yeah, it really hasn't been the fastest grower for me, so I would love some tips on Hoya Carii. Okay, now we actually covered all of the Hoyas in my home, so thank you guys so much for joining me for this Hoya tour today. Next tour, we will do all of the Aroids that I have in my home, or at least most of them, because I think I have a little bit more than I might be able to handle. <laughs> But I will be looking forward to making that video. Thank you guys so much for watching this Hoya video today. If you don't already, follow me on Instagram at Philly Foliage. Subscribe to my channel, and I will see you guys in my next video. Have a great day!